Hey there, trust our fans. In the world of Bitcoin, the great accumulation race is unfolding, at least according to Winklevoss, the Winklevoss brothers. Uh, this comes as a major investment firms like BlackRock, Fidelity, Invesco, Wisdom Tree, and Valkyrie have filed for Bitcoin spot ETFs with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, the move is believed to have sparked Bitcoin's 19% surge to 30,000 to over 30,000 actually since June 16th. Uh, Gemini co-founder Cameron Winklevoss uh, suggests that this is the beginning of a significant accumulation of Bitcoin by both institutions and retail investors. He likens uh, buying Bitcoin now to a pre-IPO purchase, warning that the floodgates for buying Bitcoin are closing fast. Uh, meanwhile, Bitcoin investor Anthony Pompliano, better known as Pomp, uh, anticipates a uh, tug of war between retail investors and Wall Street. He points out that Bitcoin's journey from zero to a nearly $1 trillion market cap happened with a minimal institutional participation as Wall Street and uh, BlackRock enter the market. He expects Bitcoin to become highly illiquid because retail investors don't want to sell to Wall Street. Yeah, look, I think what's happening right here is uh, everyone's heard of the space race where a bunch of countries got together and they all tried to get the space first. But now what we're going to see is the great accumulation race. And what I mean by that is we have institutions and individuals all scrambling to try to get their share of the 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be in existence. The retail investor for 15 years now has had a head start and they've accumulated all the Bitcoin that has been actually mined and put into circulation. But 68% of all of that Bitcoin in circulation hasn't moved in over a year. And so what that means is when Wall Street, people like BlackRock and other organizations that have now filed for these ETFs or other products show up to the market and they want to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a highly illiquid asset and these Bitcoiners don't want to sell to Wall Street. And so the only thing that can move when you have a fixed supply asset that's highly illiquid and there's a bunch of demand that comes into the market is the price has to go up. How long that takes is anyone's guess, but I think that's the big story here is the great accumulation race is underway. I happen to agree with Pomp, the alienation of retail investors will certainly not add any social capital to Bitcoin. And with Black, uh, BlackRock and Deutsche Bank at the helm, you know, the whole thing turns into yet another vile Wall Street scheme that makes my skin cold. Anyway, let's see what else is going on. In a landmark decision, the United States Supreme Court has ruled in favor of cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase, uh, marking its first ever opinion on the cryptocurrency case. The ruling holds court proceedings against Coinbase in two California cases where plaint uh, plaintiffs allege uh, the company failed to provide proper relief after users lost money and engaged in deceptive advertising. Um, Coinbase argued that users had agreed to resolve such disputes through arbitration rather than lawsuits. Uh, the Supreme Court's decision means that such cases will now go to arbitration, typically a less costly process for companies and private individuals, of course. Uh, this ruling could significantly impact the crypto industry, reinforcing the idea that existing laws can be applied to cases involving cryptocurrency. Uh, the U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is throwing his weight behind Bitcoin, advocating for a light-touch regulatory environment for crypto. Uh, speaking to the New York Post, uh, Kennedy outlined his vision for policies that empower individuals to manage their own Bitcoin wallets, nodes, and passwords. Uh, he's not a fan of central banks, uh, central bank digital currencies, viewing them as uh, instruments of control and oppression ripe for abuse. As the U.S. presidential race heats up, digital assets are emerging as a key battleground. Alameda, the hedge fund arm of Sen Bankman-Fried's former crypto empire, is seeking to claw back $700 million he doled out to uh, super networkers. According to a court filing, uh, Bankman-Fried made lucrative donations across sports, art, and politics before the bankruptcy of FTX and its associated companies. Uh, the filing alleges that Bankman Free promised billions of dollars to Michael Kives and Brian Baum of K5 Global, leading to the transfer of about $700 million in a hasty financial relationship. Uh, the, uh, the estate claims that Bankman Free saw Baum and Kives as a way to expand his influence among celebrities and political figures seeking connections and partnership. I honestly have no idea who Baum and Kives are, so I don't know. How much of a celebrity are these people? Uh, Binance has been ordered by the Belgian Financial Services and Markets Authority to halt all crypto services in Belgium. The FSMA cites Binance's violations of Belgian laws of anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism. The exchange allegedly operates, operates 19 companies outside the European economic area involved in its operations or technical support. 
uh, which do not appear in the terms and conditions for Belgian users. Uh, despite several requests for information, Binance failed to provide satisfactory answers. Uh, the order requires Binance to contact all its Belgian-based clients and return all crypto and private keys held on the exchange. Uh, Binance expressed disappointment and plans to review the regulator's notice. But filling that holy place that just became empty, Kazakhstan quickly stepped up to the plate, allowing Binance to launch a regulated digital asset platform in the country in partnership with uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan's uh, Freedom Finance Bank. Uh, the platform will offer exchange and conversion services, deposits and withdrawals of fiat, and custody of crypto assets to Kazakhstan users. Users will be able to on-ramp their fiat funds to Binance via bank cards and bank transfers. This launch follows Binance's acquisition of a permanent license to operate a digital asset platform from the country's AIFC Financial Services Authority in October 2022. That's Kazakhstan Kazakhstani regulator, AIFC, Astana something, Astana the capital of Kazakhstan. Never mind. Binance Kazakhstan's general manager, Jocelyn Madiev, highlighted that this is the first such project in the region and aims to grow the nation's human capital and integrate into the lives of its people. Here's something that doesn't happen every day, Bitcoin Cash. Incidentally, one of several major cryptocurrencies, Trust Trust Supports, wink, wink, <laughs> has seen a remarkable surge of nearly 79% in just four days, thanks to its listing on the newly launched crypto exchange EDX markets. The exchange backed by Citadel Securities, Fidelity Digital Assets, and Charles Schwab Corporation listed Bitcoin Cash alongside Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Uh, this listing has led to a three-year high in social discussion rates for Bitcoin Cash and a robust trading volume that easily surpasses 2023 highs. Um, as you watch the video, BCH is up 35.76% in the last 24 hours, hitting intraday highs above $200, a level not seen since May 2022. Uh, the 24-hour trading volume also increased by over 40, 425% as traders rushed to profit from the market spike. Uh, just a reminder, EDX markets launched last week, offering trading in Bitcoin, ETH, uh, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. EDX is uh, you know, shaking things up with a non-custodial approach. It won't handle customers' digital assets directly, instead providing a platform for firms to trade between cryptocurrencies and fiat with external settlements. Um, uh, retail brokerages are expected to route orders through EDX, echoing stock exchange models. This strategy aims to tackle security issues and potential conflicts of interest tied to uh, centralized, centralized custody of digital assets, a hot topic after recent crypto exchanges collapses. Um, with additional backing from Paradigm, Sequoia Capital, and Virtu Financial, uh, EDX also also announced the closure of a second funding round, I believe on Thursday, last Thursday that is. Uh, Deutsche Bank is stepping into the digital age, applying for a digital assets license with Germany's financial regulator, Bafin. Uh, the bank is uh, setting its sights on operating a custody service for cryptocurrencies and other digital assets, a move that signals its intent to boost income from digital offerings. This follows in the footsteps of its investment arm, DWS Group. Uh, David Lin, head honcho of Deutsche Bank's commercial banking unit, announced the uh, application at a conference. This marks a significant shift for the bank, which previously dubbed Bitcoin too volatile to be a reliable store of value. Ripple has secured an in-principle approval for major payments institutional license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, this license will allow Ripple's Singaporean uh, subsidiary to provide digital token products and services and expand the user base of its on-demand liquidity platform, ODL platform. Ripple's Singapore office has seen a 50% year-on-year increase in headcount, hiring 50 full-time employees to cover key roles. Ripple's chief legal officer, Stu Aldrodi, praised Singapore's licensing framework for promoting innovation and investment. So far, MAS has approved 190 major payment institution licenses and 11 digital payment tokens and services licenses which certain with uh, circle and crypto.com among the recipients crypto exchange binance us informed customers it had resolved us dollar withdrawal issue after working with uh, its banking partners though it warned that relief may not last uh, the exchange suspended dollar deposits and notified its customers of an incoming pause to fiat withdrawal channels on june 9th amid its ongoing battle with the sec Binance US has encouraged customers who have failed withdrawal attempts to uh, resubmit their requests. Any remaining USD balances held in customer accounts will be converted into Tether at a future date. Uh, blockchain investigator Zach XBT, known for his investigative work in the crypto industry, has received over $1 million in donations from the crypto community in just over 24 hours to cover his legal fees in a defamation lawsuit. Uh, the lawsuit was filed by Jeffrey Hong. Jeffrey Hong, I love the last name. Uh, better known as uh, Machi Big Brother on Twitter, <laughs> who accused Zach XBT of damaging his reputation through false allegations. In response, Zach XBT called the lawsuit baseless and uh, an attempt to chill free speech, 
several crypto executives, including Binance CEO Zhengpeng Zhao and Kraken co-founder Jesse Powell, have donated to Zach XBT and praised him for his work in the industry. Lawmakers in the United Kingdom are moving forward with legislation that could help support crypto adoption in the country. First introduced to the UK Parliament in July 2022, the Financial Services and Markets Bill ensured the country maintained its place in the financial world following Brexit, including granting authority on digital asset regulation. Uh, the bill went through a third reading in the House of Lords, one of the final stages in passage, before considering any additional amendments and uh, being signed into law. An apparent malicious app purporting to be crypto hardware while a Trezor has been taking off Apple's App Store, though a quick search has revealed that other copycat apps are still lurking. Fake wallet apps on Apple's App Store are nothing new. In 2021, one user reportedly lost $600,000 in Bitcoin after downloading a malicious Trezor app from the App Store. Ah, uh, want to talk about poor souls looking at years in the Libyan prison? Libyan authorities have arrested 10 Chinese nationals for running an illicit crypto mining operation in a deserted iron factory on Libya's western coast in the town of Zilton, east of Tripoli. Uh, despite being officially banned, crypto mining has surged in Libya, accounting to uh, 0.6% of global Bitcoin production in 2021, the highest in Africa though. Uh, Libya's low electricity costs make it an attractive hub for crypto mining, but the country grapples with the severe power blackouts. The Prime Minister has attributed these blackouts to the high energy consumption of Bitcoin farms. In a brazen display of crypto enthusiasm, Williamsburg's bathhouse, a trendy Brooklyn spa, proudly announced its pools are heated by Bitcoin mining pro byproducts. Uh, the energy intensive process, uh, notorious for its environmental impact, is being repurposed to warm the water. Uh, Bathhouse co-founder Jason Goodman claims uh, this double-dipping approach to energy use renders the business essentially energy natural. However, the public response is mixed. While some applaud the innovative use of waste heat, others express concern over the OPEC world of cryptocurrency mining and its profiteers. The spa, undeterred, continues to champion Bitcoin's potential positive impact. So next time you're in Brooklyn, why not take a dip in a Bitcoin heated pool? <laughs> And finally, some news from the world of rich idiots. Uh, as the cryptoverse was captivated by the story of BlackRock's application for the spot ETFs, Elon Musk must have been frustrated. His name wasn't at the top of the headlines for a few days because he quickly found a way to get back in the news. On Tuesday night, uh, last week that is, Musk posted on Twitter that he'd be up for a cage match with uh, Mark Zuckerberg if the Meta billionaire was interested. Musk was responding to a tweet about Meta's plans to launch a Twitter competitor in the coming months. Zuckerberg has been doing jujitsu uh, for quite a while and training under a black belt who's trained a number of UFC fighters. On Wednesday, Zuckerberg responded to Musk's challenge with a screenshot of Instagram stories overlaid with a send the location. Later that day, Musk tweeted a preference for the Vegas Octagon uh, and explained the strategy. Quote, I have this great move that I call the walrus where I just lie on top of my opponents and do nothing. It brings to mind the photos of him on a yacht late last year. I can't believe we actually look to these people for clues of what our future will be. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this one. Don't forget to subscribe to our TikTok where we keep the short ones and I will see you in the next video. Peace.